Welcome back. The Tampa Bay Times reported this week about efforts by the governor's office to block the release of some 600 government records related to his travel on a state airplane. A former top official with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement alleges DeSantis' staff stopped the release of the records that would have revealed who traveled with the governor on the state plane and where it went. When he and other officials pushed back on the decision, one staffer was denied a promotion, another was placed on leave, and one was forced to resign. The department denied the public records request, citing a new state law shielding the governor's travel records. Well, the Tampa Bay Times reporter covering the story is Lawrence Maurer, and he joins us right now. Hey, Lawrence, good to, see, good to have you back. Thanks for having me, Rob. So is it fair to say that reporters are trying to find out if the governor used the state plane for his presidential campaign? Well, that's part of it. Um, you know, this this the records request at issue here was filed, you know, earlier last year, of course, when it was no secret that the governor was going to run for president. But really, the issue is not just the campaign. It's also, you know, where has the governor been going within the state um, with this plane? Who has been on board? That's a really big question. Uh, we've heard some anecdotes about, you know, legislators being on board and and whatnot. But were lobbyists on board? Who else was on 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 these planes? And so, you know, there's basically lots of questions about this. It may, it may not be a scandal at all if these records were released, but we just don't know. So Florida has a pretty good public records law. Uh, why is it so difficult to get these records? Well, for these records in particular, when, when people started in news outlets, uh, in, in this particular case, this was the Washington Post had made this request. But uh, you know, basically, when, when news outlets started asking for information about where the governor was going on the state plane, the legislature last year, at DeSantis's request, moved to make these records uh, private, secret. Now, these are records that previous governors had, you know, had openly released, and sometimes it led to scandals. Um, but uh, in, in this case, you know, they shielded these particular records, but uh, relating to his travel. But the big issue here is that the governor has really made it really hard to get all kinds of records uh, from his agencies. Uh, you know, I find that I often have to send repeated requests over and over again just to get state agencies to respond to our records requests. And what this case has revealed is that the governor has really taken a, a very uh, hands-on approach about all records requests from media outlets, basically requiring state agencies to tell the governor's office when somebody is sending a records request, what it is, and when the agency compiles the records to have the governor have the final say on whether those records are released. So I imagine there's a safety concern about the governor's future travel. You, you, you don't want the public to know every place that the governor is gonna be, but my understanding is that we're talking about past travel records, travel that's already been accomplished. That's exactly right. And th these do not apply to future uh, travel records. You know, the, when when we were requesting these records before the ban on making these or before they were made secret, you know, we wouldn't get these records, you know, for months and months after the fact. So there was really no chance we were finding out whether or not, you know, where he was going in the future. Uh, the, the excuse that was, of course, given was that, oh, well, this could jeopardize, you know, if you know what airport he's going to, maybe this could jeopardize his future travel. That was always kind of a flimsy excuse. Uh, nobody really had good justification for it or any specific examples to cite here. And in fact, in this case, the uh, Florida Department of Law Enforcement's chief of staff also said that this was not a legitimate excuse. Uh, for for the safety reason, of course, FDLE is responsible for the governor's safety, and the chief of staff is the second highest ranking person in FDLE, and he thought that this is not a threat, and in fact, this is something the taxpayers should know about. So several state employees have paid a price for standing up to the governor's staff. The state employees say these records should be made public. The governor's staff says no. What price have the state employees paid? Yeah, that's exactly right. The chief of staff uh, told the Washington Post, we're going to release these records. The governor's office said, no, you won't. And uh, basically, uh, he was let go. 
Um, he was basically forced to resign. Another person who was a, a lawyer in the office who was advocating for releasing these records was denied a promotion. And another person who signed off on on that promotion was denied or basically was uh, was fired after the fact. She was placed on leave and then later fired, she says. We, we just have a minute left, but where does this stand now? Is it in the courts and, 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 and how far along is it to get these records public? Yes, this case is in the courts. It's in Leon County uh, uh, local court here. And uh, we don't know what, what the status is. The judge just recused herself from the case this week. And so presumably it will be reassigned and potentially you know, drug out for quite a bit longer. Well, it's certainly a fascinating story. Lawrence Maurer, thanks a lot for coming on Florida this week. Happy to be here.